Are you treating a blockage while the real problem keeps burning beneath the surface? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're asking whether the most common heart disease treatments fix the cause or just smooth the symptoms. We'll walk through the data and a different path that targets cellular health first. I'm Alara Sky, and we'll look at why restoring blood flow isn't the finish line, how drugs reshape numbers without repairing vessel integrity, why excess linoleic acid from vegetable oils matters, and where emerging tools like nanoparticle collation may fit, alongside the one dietary change this research highlights most. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in the United States with treatment costs reaching $417.9 billion between 2020 and 2021. That scale explains why the default has been procedures and prescriptions. The question is whether opening an artery or lowering a lab value addresses what's driving your artery to inflame and narrow in the first place. The evidence shows that PCI and CABG save lives in emergencies, but fall short for long-term disease control. In stable coronary artery disease, revascularization didn't significantly lower heart attack or death compared with medical therapy alone. It mainly reduced symptoms. Stents carry a 1% first-year thrombosis risk, 5% to 10% instant restenosis, and 20% to 30% new lesions within five years. Bypass can restore more complete flow. Roughly 90% achieve full revascularization compared with 60% to 70% for PCI, but the trade-offs are real. A 1% to 2% operative mortality, about 5% wound infections, and 10% to 20% cognitive decline, especially in older adults. Half of saphenous vein grafts fail within 10 years, so even durable fixes are not permanent. These limits make sense when you consider biology. Atherosclerosis reflects endothelial injury, lipid buildup, and inflammation. 30 to 40% of people with coronary disease have elevated IL-6 or CRP, and inserting a stent or sewing a graft doesn't normalize those signals. Without calming that inflammatory chemistry, new trouble tends to reappear. Drugs bring a similar pattern. Statins lower LDL and reduce major cardiovascular events by roughly 25% to 35% in high-risk groups, but they don't rebuild arterial resilience. In one example, rosuvastatin reduced adverse events by 44%, yet increased high-sensitivity CRRP, underscoring that better cholesterol can coexist with ongoing inflammatory stress. You also have to weigh side effects. 10 to 15% report myalgia, with 1% to 2% stopping therapy. Rare but severe rhabdomyolysis and liver injury have been documented, and the risk of type 2 diabetes rises over four to five years. The takeaway is clear. Numbers improve, but residual risk persists if oxidative damage and inflammation stay active. That brings us to linoleic acid, the omega-6 fat concentrated in vegetable oils. Historical intake hovered near 2.8%. Modern diets sit around 7.2%. LA's structure makes it prone to peroxidation once it embeds in mitochondrial membranes, disrupting energy production and generating reactive oxygen species that injure your arterial lining. The downstream effect is sticky arteries and aggressive plaque growth. LA integrates into LDL. When it oxidizes, you get OXLDL, the more dangerous form that drives inflammation. One analysis the paper cites found that replacing saturated fat with LA-rich vegetable oil increased cardiovascular mortality by 62% over five years despite lowering cholesterol by 8 mg per deciliter. Minimizing LA intake changes the picture. A 1965 trial giving patients 19 teaspoons of corn oil a day showed increased heart risk, foreshadowing modern findings. In a 12-week study highlighted in the paper, Reducing LA to under 5 grams per day cut HSCRP by 15% and IL-6 by 10% versus control. 
measurable improvements without focusing on calorie deficits. There's a time factor. LA has a half-life of about two years in body fat, so clearing old stores takes patience, but benefits start early. The obvious sources are soybean, corn, safflower, sunflower, grapeseed, and similar industrial oils. Less obvious, conventionally raised poultry and pork concentrate LA due to their feed. The actionable steps are straightforward. Remove vegetable oils from your diet, avoid fried and ultra-processed foods that hide them, and choose grass-fed animal fats. Keeping daily LA under 5 grams is the target emphasized here. Under 2 grams is even better if you can reach it. That single shift lowers inflammatory signaling linked to artery injury. Researchers are also testing ways to address calcified plaque directly. Intravenous EDTA chelation binds minerals, but it's indiscriminate, demands hours of circulation, and requires many sessions before benefits appear, factors that limit practicality and precision. A newer approach packages chelators into nanoparticles or liposomes that home to plaque, enabling targeted delivery. These nanoliposomal formulations can be taken orally rather than intravenously and are estimated to cost about 80% less than IV protocols. Early findings are encouraging, especially for calcified lesions, but long-term safety is where scalability and biodegradability still need clarification. The broader strategy is prevention first. The paper project's heart disease may claim 25 million lives throughout 2025. A sobering reminder that waiting for a blockage is the wrong moment to start caring about arterial biology. KBG alone can run around $100,000, and lifestyle changes after procedures show only about 50% adherence, so upstream measures matter. Clinical research tends to isolate one intervention at a time, yet your risk comes from interacting factors. Addressing LA-driven inflammation while exploring targeted tools is not an either-or choice. The most immediate lever you control is what fuels your mitochondria and what you keep out of your kitchen. Here's your challenge based on the findings. For the next 14 days, hold linoleic acid under 5 grams daily by eliminating vegetable oils, skipping fried and ultra-processed foods, and choosing grass-fed animal fats. Track how consistently you hit that target. If you're exploring collation in any form, treat it as an adjunct while you maintain low LA intake and watch for emerging research. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.